Hi, Jane. Lovely to meet up with you again and spend some more time working on your game. You're making some really nice changes in the overall movement. Um, yesterday was about tidying things up above anything else. Obviously, the ball striking's improved. You're having some fun out on the golf course again. Um, but the action itself does lend itself to requiring a little bit too much compensation. Um, the thing that you picked up on was how, as you described it, hunched you looked coming into the golf ball. So really that the session yesterday was about tidying up your position through the ball, making things look a little bit more tidy and also trying to dispel a few myths. So we saw in the takeaway there in the practice session that you were trying to create a little bit of artificial width. There's no need to sort of extend the arms out. As you do that, the left shoulder works very level and you start to get pulled off the golf ball. Radius is excessively wide and then needs to be narrowed too much during the downswing. So, swing itself, getting into a nice position at the top, keeping the weight forward. However, as you change direction, the tendency is to hang on to the angles in the right arm. The hips start to outrace the arms. The left shoulder comes up very quickly. And we start to look a little bit untidy coming into the impact area. So we've got uh, right knee that's flexing too much. A left shoulder that's working up too fast. Hips that have been thrust towards the target because that's what you've been trying to focus on. But unfortunately the arms have been left behind. So what we talked about were two exercises to do. One's a, a very passive exercise, doesn't really involve hitting a ball. It's about breaking down what's required from the top of the backswing. Um, and the other is more of a ball striking exercise, which you'll see as we come to the end comparison, had some really good benefits to your overall action. So what we're looking to do is during the downswing, we're looking for the butt of the club to steadily move away from the right shoulder. So the arms are coming down at the same rate at which the body is moving forward. So you can see as you start doing this drill, I have to just speed your arms up a little bit. Now as I get involved and I start speeding your arms up, you'll see that as I push the club where I want it to go, the right arm starts to expand and the left arm moves forward. So the feeling here is that the butt of the club is steadily moving away from the right shoulder and the checkpoint is so that when the shaft is parallel with the ground we want the hands to be in line with the belt buckle and you can see when you do that and just get rid of those lines for a second and just move out of the way when we do that we have much more level shoulders than we see on the far left. So the left shoulder hasn't come up as quick. The right knee, because it's a passive movement, isn't over flexing. And the hips are not out racing the arms. So the body and the arms are working in sympathy with one another. So again, as you go through that routine, swing to the top of the swing, stop, and then move the club. So return the shaft parallel to the ground, and get the butt of the club in line with the belt. So that's encouraging the arms, the butt of the club being moved away from the right shoulder by the right arm expanding and the left arm moving forward as opposed to the shoulder lowering and hanging on, left shoulder working up, right shoulder working down, hips going forward but the arm's not engaging enough. That gives us this rather sort of untidy look at delivery and then we'll run through the effects it has in the three swings shortly. The second drill was to swing to the top, hold this position for a count of three. Now this is great for familiarising yourself with where you want to be at the top of the backswing and then once you've held that position for a count of three, go ahead, hit the shot. It's task driven. A good golfer will always want to hit a decent golf shot. Uh, the act of trying to hit the ball successfully from a standing start requires you to synchronise your movements much more efficient, uh, efficiently. So from here now, you start to see that the arms engage earlier, 
the butt of the club moves away from the right shoulder more incrementally. The left shoulder hasn't flown up. The right knee isn't over flexing. And the hips don't look like they've outraced the arms. And if you play these two swings through together, you'll also start to see that because the unit of the arms is working more in sympathy with the body, the impact position is much tidier. And then as we come through the ball, the tucking of the hips, the getting rid of the forward bend is also starting to tidy up. So we don't look like we're chasing after it as much with the torso on the way through, which is what we talked about in previous sessions. So you can see there that the completion of your swing is much, much different. So again, you know, look at the images, try and digest the information. The drill that you're seeing on the top right here is something that you need to do away from the golf course to just develop your understanding of what the arms and the body need to do in the downswing. The drill on the bottom left, like I said yesterday, I mean, the way you were swinging it when you were doing this, you could literally just do that and then go play golf. You wouldn't need to necessarily think too much about your golf swing. That's a great drill for helping with the sequencing of your golf swing. Good luck with it. I'll follow some dates for early to early to mid-May over the next 48 hours. Hope you enjoy your golf in the sunshine over the next few weeks and look forward to meeting up soon to work further on your game. Well done.